hundred or so years. And so, for example, starting with telephones at the bottom there, what that's saying is that when the telephone was first invented, uh, it took and first put into someone's home, it took 71 years from the time the telephone was invented till the time that it, the average American could afford to have a telephone in their house. 71 years. That's three generations uh, in terms of the dispersion of that technology. Electricity was 52 years or two generations. Um, radios was uh, 30 years, uh, TVs 20 years. And you can see as we move towards these more and more modern innovation in inventions, they become much, much uh, more rapidly uh, available to people and affordable to people. So you can see what happens with you know uh, CD players and the internet and DVDs and, that and so on. You know, it's interesting, I give a lot of talks to um, college kids. In fact, I was just at the uh, University of North Carolina on Monday night and giving a talk, and there were, there were a bunch of liberals there heckling me, oh, things are so terrible about America, the ice caps are melting, all this stuff. And, you know, they were just really down, were down on America, and we're responsible for all the problems in America, and this is such a terrible time to be alive. So I just couldn't take it anymore, and there were about 100 kids in the room. So I finally said, look, you kids think things are so terrible. And by the way, my own son's in the same category. This is just maybe the way young people are. I said, you kids think things are so terrible. I said, I just want to do a little quick survey in this room. How many of you have a laptop computer? They all raise their hand. How many of you have a cell phone? They all raise their hand. You know, how many have access to the internet? They all raise their hand. How many have iPods? I mean, half of the kids are listening to iPods while I'm giving my talk, so they all. <laughs> <laughs> they, the point is, they didn't even understand the point I was making, right? I mean, their attitude was, well, duh. Of course we have these things. Of course we have the internet. Of course we have cell phones. Of course we have iPods. They think, and, and again, my son's like, they think that living without these things is like living in the Fred Flintstones era, right? They don't understand that these technologies have only been around for 10 or 15 or 20 years. And, and so I just think we're moving to a future where we're gonna see you know, massive increases in health and technology and so on that are gonna improve our lives greatly. And I was just gonna show you one more chart and then I'm gonna bring this to an end. Um, well, there's two more. This is just, or if you can go uh, that, that, that's by the order here. But look, look, this is basically why the Republicans got, this is a Republican audience, so I can, uh, you know, can have a come to Jesus moment here. Um, the reason Republicans got thrown out of office in 2006 and 2008 is really encapsulated by this chart. You can see what happens with the, this, the blue line is the defense budget and the red line is the non-defense budget. And you can see under the Clinton years, look at that, there was almost no growth in the budget. I mean, Bill Clinton was maybe the most fiscally conservative president we've had you know, other than Reagan in, in the last 50 years. Now, a lot of that was due to the fact that in 1994, we had the Republican Revolution, and the combination of Clinton and, and, uh, and Newt running the Congress, you know, was very flat rate of growth. And by the way, the other reason that we had balanced budgets was that Reagan won the Cold War, so you can see the big reduction in military spending. But look at what happens in that chart in 2001. Look at that. I mean, that's amazing. Now, of course, we had to spend more money on the defense uh, and the national security. We were hit by 9-11. We were hit by terrorists. So the, the increase in the defense budget is, is certainly explainable. But look at what happens in the non-defense budget. You know, this is a time when, for the first time in 50 years, Republicans run, run, ran the House, the Senate, and the presidency. And they let us down. I mean, it's that simple. Look at the reason Republicans got their clocks clean in 2006 is Americans said, you don't believe in anything, right? You don't believe in limited government. You don't believe in balanced budgets. You don't believe in lower taxes. And, and I think they were right to throw the guys out. And, and then in 2008, Republicans paid another price again. And unfortunately, Barack Obama has come in and just simply doubled down on this incredible increase in spending. We need uh, you know, political leaders who will cut spending dramatically. We need a 10 or 15% across the board cut in every agency right now. We need to, this deficit reduction commission is a joke. They can cut spending right now. They could cut $500 billion in spending right now by simply canceling the, the rest of the stimulus spending, right? And, and that would make a dramatic impact on our future. Uh, if you'll show the next, you can skip that one. I think this is where your money goes. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Wait a minute, can I, can, can I just, can I just, sorry. I, I really do want to. This was based on a very scientific survey. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to show you one last chart because I've used more of your time. It's not that one, I'm sure it's in here. Keep going. Keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on, keep on. There's, I think it's in, keep on. I think it's towards the end. I mean, this one. This is the last point I want to make. Look, why do some countries succeed and why do other countries remain poor? You know, it's the great question throughout the ages. And I think everyone in this room, because you're Republicans, you understand this, that economic growth and prosperity and rising living standards are a function of your economic system, that policy does matter and that free markets matter. And what we've done here is we've just looked at economic freedom as, as uh, 
uh, measured by the Cato Institute, and economic freedom is basically property rights and contractual, uh, you know, right of contract, and um, you know, low taxes and low tariffs, and all the things that we all believe in. And you can see the point of this is that as you move from the least free, and least free countries are countries like North Korea and Cuba, and countries like the African countries and, and, and uh, Iran. Those countries have, you know, almost no incomes, right? They produce almost nothing. And you can see as you move more towards a freedom model, um, your income goes up by virtue of the fact that we all won the ultimate lottery of life, that we were born uh, or chose to live in this great, great, great country. We have a five times higher earning capacity than people who live in countries without economic freedom, right? I mean, it's pretty simple. The more economic freedom you have, the richer you get. And it's also true, the more economic freedom you have, the better your health is, uh, you know, life expectancy by virtue of the fact that we were born in this great country. We have a 20 year longer lifespan than people who were born in countries that don't have economic freedom. So economic freedom is the key. And the reason I mention this is that, you know, we just did the, um, I just got the newest report from Cato and Heritage on this, and guess what? They say that because of what we did last year, in 2008 and 2009, this massive increase of socialization of the American economy, they have moved the United States from the most free category to the second category. That is, you know, they're, what? Right, right, so I mean, that's an amazing thing. In other words, the, the per point of this chart is you want to be moving in this direction, right? And we're moving in that direction. And, that, and I think that's, I'm going to just conclude with that point. We need a radical correction, and we need it, right, we need it right now. And I think, you know, there's no alternative to have Republicans do it because Democrats certainly won't. Thank you very much.